resumes. Love them or hate them, they're an incredibly powerful tool to help you and your career grow. So why do so many of them suck? They're either like super wordy or there's too much information and it just overwhelms the recruiters or the hiring managers and you're kind of doing yourself an injustice because all your key information and experiences have the risk of being lost in that wall of text. So today I'm going to share with you a simple resume template I've made which instills DataViz best practices which has helped me and hundreds of others out there and have hiring managers go, this is amazing, why can't all resumes be like this? I'll also add in some of my design choices to help you understand why I put certain things in and where they're structured. So let's dive in. So resumes are extremely subjective. So these are just my own opinions and what I found works for me, but also feedback from others who have benefited from this template and hiring managers who have found this incredibly useful when finding the right candidate. So first off, we need to ask what the objective is of your resume. It kind of acts as your North Star to know what success looks like. And ultimately, it's there to make you stand out from the other applicants and just get your foot in the door to get an interview, nothing else. And once you realize that, it's quite liberating knowing what to put in and what to keep out of your resume. Essentially, it's there to convey key information to your recruiter and hiring managers, made them go, oh, I like to look at this person. Let's get them in for an interview and dig deeper and find out more. So if you think about it, put yourself in the shoes of the recruiter. They have very little time. They have tons of CVs. So anything you can do to make their job easier and your information stand out is going to be a big win for you and increase your chances of getting seen and chosen for the next round. Let's look at the structure. So for the actual roles, I've kind of got some high level information at the top and then broken it down into three sections, like a high level elevator pitch, a summary of your day-to-day -day activities, i.e. what you just do normally for your job and what you're paid to do. And then the last one is your achievements or your above and beyond activities. Because then it gives a real clear guide and consistent pattern for the people looking at your resume of, okay, right, what was that role? Okay, cool, day-to-day, -to -day, they did well at that, awesome. And then I want someone who goes above and beyond in any role. And I've got some great ideas of how this person has gone above and beyond in those roles because I want someone in my role to go above and beyond too and not just do what we've asked them to do. I've also used some Gestalt principles to kind of group up the information so it's very clear to the audience where one piece of information starts and another ends. Without having to put loads of lines and extra ink on the page to kind of clutter it up further and distract the eye. Lastly, you may notice I've kind of gone for bullet points and limited myself to like one sentence or two per item. This just makes sure we're super succinct because remember the objective of your resume is to just get that key information through the door and not write war and peace about your entire career. That can come later when you're in the interview and they ask you. So next up is formatting. So you may notice I've kind of bolded certain words so they stand out and I've kind of lightened or de-emphasized others. This is just to kind of create a visual hierarchy which is implicit to the reader that the bolded stuff is more important and stands out and should be read first and the other stuff is kind of nice to know and you're like, if you're in a rush, which again we found out all recruiters and hiring managers are, you're doing them a solid and actually helping them go, hey, you know what? I know you're time poor. Read this, this, and this. And if you want to go deeper, the rest is there. But in a pinch, these are the key things I want you to take away from my experience and career. And again, that's why so many recruiters have come to me and gone, oh, this is golden. I love it. Because it just makes their job that little bit easier to find the right candidate, which should be you. And you can see in this example here, it's kind of quickly outlines my revenue achievements per quarter. I achieved this project here. You know, it just kind of stands out. So in a pinch, if you have like 20 seconds to read it, boom, 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 you've got a clear idea, let's move forward. Whereas if you compare that to a big wall of text, say like on four pages of just solid text, the reader, the hiring manager or recruiter is not gonna read and pour through everything. Technically, yes, the data is in there, but the information and insights are not standing out and being clear to them. Now we move on to logos. Now again, this is subjective. And I get asked this quite a lot, but I found if you work for companies or with companies who have memorable logos, which stand out, use them. Why not? These companies have spent millions of dollars a year just to make sure that their logos and brand associations stand out and are attached to those logos. So why not harness that power for your own good? But if you work in an industry without recognizable logos and it's just going to confuse people and kind of make them squint and figure out what they're looking at, maybe don't put them in. And lastly, logos are designed to stand out and catch people's attention. So I like to put a grayscale over all the logos. So one, it kind of levels them. And also it's not competing and increasing that cognitive load for your audience when they're looking at your CV. And if you like this video, please consider like, comment and subscribing. It really helps the channel out 
and it lets me know what kind of content you want to see more of. And now we get on to length. I prefer two pages, one if you can do it, but no more than two. It's a resume and not a CV. And hey, during this video, I learned the difference. A resume is a summary of your career and a CV is more of an itemized list of everything you've done. And most places ask for a resume. Look, I get it. You want to put four page plus wall of text in to convey every single thing you've done, but it's hard to be objective because it's you, right? Of course they'll read my CV. I'm amazing. They have to know everything about me. But again, put yourself in the perspective of your audience, put their hat on. Your hiring manager is just looking at another piece of paper and a stack of papers. And if you give them four pieces of paper, they've still got the same amount of time per candidate to look for all that stuff. And now they have to read quicker, possibly skip or miss things. And you've just reduced the chances of your key information standing out to get you to the next stage of the interview process be greatly reduced, which you don't want. And again, remember, it gets you through the door. You can add all that detail later on in the interview, if asked. Also, most jobs to a degree require to summarize lots of information succinctly. So if you're just whacking down a four page resume, you're kind of conveying you can't do that, which is a bit of a deal break for a lot of roles. And if you really, really want to just include all the roles you've done, look what I did. I just kind of put the headers of my really, really old roles just to kind of imply that I've worked there, had experience, come up through the ranks, but I haven't put any details down. Again, if people want to know, they'll ask me in the interview. Next up, I get asked, do you put a picture of yourself in your CV? And unless you're an actor or an actress, there's no reason to put your headshot in a CV. It has no bearing, but again, bring yourself back to the objective of the resume. It's there to convey your experience and history of work to your prospective employer to see if they want to get you to the next round. What you look like is immaterial and it's just a bit cheesy really. And of course, for me, I'm definitely not gonna put my face in because it's kind of not fair to the other candidates if they have to compete with it. And now we move on to interests. Now this is something which is a bit of a pet peeve of mine. Interests need to be interesting, okay? I have seen so many resumes where people go, I like to travel, I like to eat. You know what? So does 99% of human beings everywhere who have ever existed. And it's not that interesting, okay? Unless you're doing something cool with it, if you're doing like a travel blog and you're writing stuff up or you're doing a restaurant review or you're doing a cooking kind of channel or something, like that's interesting. Tell us about that. But if you just like to eat and go from A to B, I don't know, do better. <laughs> Put something interesting in, otherwise it's just a waste of space and not helping you or anyone else. Because not only is the hiring manager looking for people who can do the job, you're going to work in a team, company, and a culture. And I just want to get a good sense check if you're going to fit in a mesh well and contribute to all of that. So for me, look at my examples. I run a website and YouTube channel on data visualization that shows I'm passionate and interested in my areas of expertise. And also I can bring some media production talents to my roles as needed, which can be a nice value add if companies need it, but obviously don't want to spend tons of money on external agencies. And also I've created my own graphic novel. It shows I can manage creatives. It shows I can structure stories in a kind of critical, well thought out way on a page so it makes sense. And again, it's just kind of cool. So again, it makes you stand out a bit more interesting. It's again, it's the interest section. Everyone I've spoken to, once I mention this, they actually go a bit deeper and think about it and they can easily put more interesting things on their resume. So I hope you can too. Lastly, references. No need for this. Again, if you get your foot in the door, get an interview, go to the next stage, then they're going to want to start talking to references. Just mention they can be available on request, but they don't need to take up like a fifth of a page right now. Okay. So as I mentioned at the start, this template is free for everyone. So you can use it right now. It's just a Google Doc. I've structured it all out so you don't have to worry about any of the formatting. You just have to worry about the content. Just go down into the link in the description below and you can click on it and open it up. And also I purposely designed it so like, again, you have the bullet points so you keep yourself succinct. So I'd love to see how this can help you and potentially others who might be needing a really good resume right now. So if it's helped you or someone else, also let me know in the comments below. Or if you've got any other cool tips around resumes, which you found worked for you, or if you hire a lot of people and you know what stands out, let me know as well down below. It could help me and everyone else out. Till the next time, thanks for watching. Thank you.